It was the year of 1946. World War II had just ended. The first ever UN meeting took place in London. President Truman created the CIA. Winston Churchill gives his famous Iron Curtain speech. At the same time, in Australia, a strange case happens. Something never seen before. The shepherds complain of the lack of sheep fertility. The reproduction rates went down significantly and no one knew why. After they studied the sheep, they concluded that a large portion of the diet was made out of red clover. And red clover was very high in phytoestrogens, which are also present in soy. And thus, for the first time, phytoestrogens were associated with infertility. However, in order to humans to eat the same amount of phytoestrogens that the sheep were eating, humans would have to eat around a thousand liters of soy milk or 360 kilos of tofu. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we are going to take a look into the soy, phytoestrogen and testosterone question because here in my hand I have the results of my last blood test and in this blood test I actually got my testosterone levels checked. Now for the past three years I ate soy every single day. Every single day I eat some type of soy product whether that's soy milk, tofu, textured vegetable protein every single day for the past three years I had the soy product and today we are going to find out if that impacted my testosterone levels or not but before we look into that we need to take a look at where this myth was born three decades later in 1987 astronomers from the University of California observed for the first time the birth of a galaxy Mike Tyson became the world champion in boxing. At the same time, the researcher Satchel and colleagues established the relationship between the consumption of isoflavones and infertility in cheetahs in American zoos. Of the four studied cheetahs, all the symptoms went away when they replaced the soy in their diet with chicken. They replaced soy with chicken in cheetahs, carnivores, that were eating half a kilo of tofu a day. So, one of the reasons that people associate soy with estrogens is because soy has phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens are the plant estrogens and they are very, 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 very different from animal estrogens. They're not even on the same level. Phytoestrogens are so, so much weaker than for it to impact our testosterone or estrogen levels, we will need to eat so, 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 so much phytoestrogens that it's almost humanly possible. And the phytoestrogens in soy have actually been really, really well researched because those types of phytoestrogens are called isoflavones and they have been shown to be incredibly healthy for us, especially in fighting cancer with breast cancer and prostate cancer. So there's really an extensive amount of research out there. Soy has actually been really well studied and the question whether the soy raises estrogen or not has really been well studied. And in this video I want to share with you two meta-analyses, two huge, huge studies. Huge. If you don't know what a meta-analysis is, is a study that looks at all the other studies made on a topic and compiles all the information. So in one study you get the information of 30, 40, 50 studies and today I want to talk especially about two very very good meta-analysis on these topics. So the first meta-analysis that I want to share with you is from 2010 and they tried to find some feminizing effects with the consumption of soy with soy isoflavones, the phytoestrogens present in soy and this is what they found from all the research 
up to that point. In contrast to the results of some rodent studies, findings from a recently published meta-analysis and subsequently published studies show that neither isoflavone supplements nor isoflavone-rich soy affect total or free testosterone levels. Similarly, there is essentially no evidence from the nine identified clinical studies that isoflavone exposure affects circulating estrogen levels in men. Clinical evidence also indicates that isoflavones have no effect on sperm or semen parameters. Finally, findings from animal studies suggesting that isoflavones increase the risk of erectile dysfunction are not applicable to men because of the differences in isoflavone metabolism between rodents and humans and the excessively high amount of isoflavones to which the animals were exposed. It was the year of 2008. The stock market had its biggest crash yet. Fidel de Castro retired as Cuba president. In Switzerland, the Large Hadron Collider was turned on for the first time, finishing the biggest experiment ever in a human history. Barack Obama became the first African-American president of the United States. Meanwhile, a 16-year-old man goes to the hospital with a big gynecomastia, also known as man boobs. He declared that he had loss of libido and erectile dysfunction. After examining the case, the doctors concluded that this man was drinking 3 liters of soy milk a day and that was the cause of the gynecomastia. Being 60, he probably also had low testosterone. The other meta-analysis is also from 2010, but it's even bigger than the last one. This one tried to find a relationship between soy consumption and testosterone, and this is what it found. The results of this meta-analysis suggest that neither soy foods nor isoflavone supplements alter measures of bioavailable T concentrations in men. As you can see, again, another very high quality study that found no relationship between soy consumption and testosterone decrease or even increase for that matter. It was the year of 2010. An earthquake in IT killed 160,000 people. The oil platform Deepwater Horizon exploded in the Gulf of Mexico, killing 11 people causing an environmental disaster. In Chile, a group of 33 miners was stuck underground for 69 days. Meanwhile, a 19-year-old type 1 diabetic young man goes to the hospital complaining of loss of libido and erectile dysfunction. The symptoms lasted for one year. After examining the case, the doctors found the worst. The boy was following a vegan diet. After the cessation of the vegan diet and the small treatment, the symptoms went away and the levels got back to normal. On this particular vegan diet, the boy was eating 360 milligrams of isoflavones a day. That's the equivalent of around 3 liters of soy milk a day or 3 kilos of tofu. But wait, from all the stories that I've told you, there were like two registered cases of people actually having side effects with soy consumption. They were eating huge, huge, huge amounts of soy that are not normal at all. So where do we draw the line? Is there an upper limit for how much soy we can have a day? Is there a limit where it will have an effect? Does the dose make the poison? That's what we are going to find out in my next video. So, to finish off this video, we are going to take a look at my testosterone levels after, after three years on a vegan diet and eating soy every single day. Now, testosterone levels usually should be between 250 and 900 and mine are 544, okay? So, above average. As you can see, eating soy every day on regular 
amounts, eating regular amounts of soy, had nothing to do with my testosterone or even with my estrogen. So that's it for the video guys, like the video if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the second part of the video. And I'm gonna see you all in the next video. Peace!